Um, oh, it's just a great honour again to be able to uh, speak to people that uh, show up at, at church and, and to be able to listen to a word. And I, I don't uh, claim that this word is um, the, my best work. In fact, it's probably not. Uh, but I wrote it with the, whole, the power of the Holy Spirit, um, and and I believe that the power of the Holy Spirit takes an average word and turns it into something that could change your life if yeah. you allow it to. And so um, before I do bring this word, I'm going to um, just pray and just ask for the power of God. I, I'm, I'm very busy at the moment. I've just gone back to work, and that's very stressful for me because I don't like working. I like I'm um, going to the cafe and have a coffee. Um, so, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so uh, I I just feel busy in my brain, and so I need um, the power of God just to come and put peace on that before um, this happens. Heavenly Father, right now. Um, I just pray for your spirit. I pray more than ever uh, that you will minister to us today, that what is said will uh, come and just uh, it'll just get inside us, that these words will, will change us from the inside out. Father, we give you praise and we give you all the glory for everything that uh, you are and, and you've done for us and, and we know that we don't match up, but your grace is still there for us. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, I've been seen. I've been seen. He knows I feel tired and I want to have a coffee at the cafe, so it's all good. <laughs> right, there's three things this morning. I always do a three-pointer for some reason. I like a bit of, I like a bit of structure in my speaking, uh, but they're really not flowing points. Uh, and so I would love to say that one goes to the other, but they really don't. They're just three thoughts that I have um, been sort of processing and working through in my brain, but that, 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 that the Holy Spirit has put on my heart to share with you today. And so that I would pray that they will encourage you in your daily fight. Now, who knows that the Christian walk is actually a fight. Um, and, and now more than ever, you actually have to fight to keep your faith. Um, f- there's so many things. Where, I mean, where do we even start of things that will come and try and take away your faith? And, and I don't think we're actually, you know, I don't think we're far from just every day having to wake up and be like, look, if I don't put the armour of God on today, I'm just not going to survive. Like, yeah. we, we actually have to just get serious about fighting yeah. to protect... The thing that we have inside of us, it's faith, right? It's the gift of faith that lives inside of us. We have to fight to protect that. Otherwise, the world will just come and steal it. And, uh, and I believe that that's not what uh, God has for us. And so what I would pray today is that you would reflect on a couple of these uh, points. Even if you just reflect on one of them, it has the power to change you. My message today is entitled, Three Things That I Think Jesus Would Be Very Interested In if he was walking in flesh form today. You would say to me, oh, you know, he is with us. The Holy Spirit's with us. Go with me on this. If he was in our flesh, if he was beside us, if he was sitting beside us right now in flesh form, I think there's a few things he would be very interested in talking about. The first one, I believe, is not to worry. Philippians 4, 6-7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. Now listen to this part. And the peace, and the peace of God will surpass all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So, so this is easier said than done, Right? Worry, I believe, is one of the biggest things that the Christians are doing too much of, <laughs> right? Because we're not supposed to be worrying. Now, I'm not talking about, um, I'm not talking about mental health this morning. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like, there is a difference between having mental health uh, struggles and battles, and, and, and they're all valid. Everything's valid. But I'm just talking about worry. Unnecessary worry that just happens in our brains because our brains are over busy, they're overstimulated, so we just end up worrying all the time, right? We lie awake at night going, I wonder what's going to happen. We worry about all the stuff that doesn't actually happen, 
right? Most of the time anyway. And so I'm talking about that. This, so, so Paul says that I haven't mastered a lot of this stuff, right? And, and so th- that's my thing today. I wish I had mastered this, but I'm just sharing with you out of my experience. Easier said than done. The information-rich society that we're in right now, the world that my kids are growing up in, I find myself often thinking about how this world is so different to how even how it was when I was born in the 80s, We'll probably work out now how old I am. You'll go, oh, yeah. yeah. But even how it was when I was in 80s, 90s growing up, the world we live in now is so different. Yeah. It's so different. Yeah. And, and, and it's so easy as a father to worry about what kind of world our kids are growing up in. Uh, um, you, you don't have to talk far, but you talk to like my parents and they're worried for their grandkids and, and, and then we worry for our kids, you know, you know, and so you start to worry about these things. Everything we see in the world is conditioning us to get wound up about what's going on, yeah. right? It conditions the Christians to wind up, right? You, you could go and look at something on, on, on Facebook and it'll wind you up. You could go look at the news and it'll wind you up. You could get your rates bill and it's higher than it's ever been and it'll wind you up. <laughs> right? So, so, so we want, and, and you know, like during the week, so I'm just going to be, I'll pull my heart out to you right, right now, okay? During the week, this sort of stuff happened. My wife went to work with my other set of car keys. I had to walk 15 minutes to take the kids to school. <laughs> it wound me up. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm the busy guy. I've got stuff to do, man. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Don't you understand? <laughs> I had to write my message. It's like, yeah, come on. So there's all these things that wind us up. I watched the news for a couple of minutes. That really wound me up. Oh, don't do that. It wound me up. I got my, I got my power bill. Gosh, what's happened to the power? That wound me up. I was like, I said to my wife, I said, oh, this power bill, it's winding me up. <laughs> like, so, and there's all these things that just happen day. And so we're conditioned to, to get anxious. We're conditioned to worry about how we're going to pay for these things and how we're going to put food on the table. And, how we, and the world is trying to condition us to be like that. And, and God is saying the whole time, don't worry about these things. I, 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 the birds don't worry about what they eat and I provide for them. That's your story. Amen to that. So, so there's all these things that we just get all upset about and it's like, don't worry about some of these things that we can't control. I don't own the power company. I can't control what my power bill is going to be. I don't own Wipar District Council. I can't control what the Vinks are going to be charged for rates this, this, uh, this bit. You know what I mean? Like this quarter. I, don't, I can't control the stuff that, that, that ends up, I end up getting worked up about. But the things I can control, the other things that I actually have to start putting into my heart and I have to start to think about, what kind of father am I? What kind of husband am I being? How am I running our family? How am I, how am I, as, an, I as an employee? Yeah. You, you know, like those are the things I can control. Yeah. But they're the things that often don't take up a lot of space in my mind. And guess what? They should. Yeah. They should take up more space in my mind. Yeah. Less of the stuff that I don't actually, I can't actually fix. I can't, I could write a letter to the, to the Waipart District Council, but I bet you my rates won't go down. <laughs> I, could, I, could, I, could, I could try and buy shares in Contact Energy. That's not going to make my power bill cheaper, you know? So, so, so I can't control these things, but I can control my response to these things. And... I believe that Jesus, if he was in flesh form right now, was saying, you guys are a bit worried about a few things you probably don't need to worry about. I'll look after you. I'll take care of you. We're going to walk this together. Like This is a journey that we walk with Christ, right? We walk together with this. I reckon this winter's been really harsh. I don't know about you, but I like had this chest infection for eight weeks. It was like, it was like, <sighs> and I hardly breathe. I went to the doctor. I was like, and I've, I've, you know, because I'm a stubborn male, and I was about nine weeks in, and I was like, <laughs> I need a, I need some medicine. Like, give me some antibiotics or something. I like, I can't fight this thing. And the doctor listens to me. and says, "You're breathing at forty percent capacity." And I said, "Yeah, I feel it too." Everyone, <laughs> have a sit down. <laughs> 
But and she gives me this like a moxicillin, and I was like, yeah, thank you. I went on that for a week, and all of a sudden I start to breathe properly again. I was like, but I reckon this winter's just been really hard. My kids have missed weeks of school. And there's so many things in that space when you're just going through hard sickness and things are everything's around you, just like, and it just causes you to see the, the, the downside of that and it brings extra worry. But it's so important that we pray about these things and we say, God, you know, like during this time I was saying, God, you know that I want my family to be well. Yeah. We don't want the sickness going on in our family. And so we just keep praying, we keep believing. And we try not to worry about what we can't control in that situation. And we, we just try and focus on getting better. I remember when I was a pastor of a church. Yeah, I know, it was a long time ago. And you're all thinking, gosh, how did he ever be a pastor? But yeah, that was, I was a pastor. And um, things, things at the church had not been going that well for a while. Um, we had had a bunch of people who had had really big relationship problems. And so that was quite hard to sort of pass to people through. Then we had, um, we had some elders and they were having a few issues and so that was quite hard to sort of be. And then, and then my wife was just um, newly pregnant and it was our first son and the hospital made this big scene about how we were going to have to, he was going to have to be born at Starship and have open heart surgery. And so we were a bit worried about all of this stuff, right? And, and I found myself driving home. We lived in the middle of nowhere down in Palmerston North. And I found myself driving home one day and I could feel the weight of the world on my shoulders. And, and I don't know about you, but you've probably been in that position before where you've yeah. just felt like it's heavy. And, and I could feel it. And I knew that. It, and then I was worried about the fact that I was worried because I was a pastor <laughs> who should have had faith right? <laughs> Who should have been able to speak to my situation. But I was worried about the fact that now I was feeling like this thing and I would like been preaching to people like, we've got to let God take this. And then I felt it in myself. And it was heavy. And I remember feeling like, God, this is just, it's, I don't need to carry this. This is not what I meant to be carrying. And these seasons that we go through, they help us grow. But I believe that this part of this verse, which is very, very important to understand in this point, it says here, um, will guard, God will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And in that time, when I was in that, in that darkest place and I could feel that really big burden of worry, I felt like God was standing there going, nah, I'm going to guard your mind from any more of this rubbish. You don't need to carry this anymore. You can be set free from this worry. Do you know today, there's probably somebody sitting here right now thinking, you know what, I've got too much worries going on in my life right now. And I believe that God's saying to you right now, let your mind be stilled in Jesus' name. Let your mind rest. Okay, worry is not going to help you. Worry is not going to help you. It usually gives you high blood pressure. It makes you unstable. It, it, it creates tension in your life. Faith in God is how you get through that. You believe that He can provide. He is the God that will look after you. He has done it time and time again. And guess what? He will do it again. He will do it again. All right, that's my first thing. If that's you today, you're going to have a chance at the end again I don't know how this is going to go, but at the end, there's probably going to be a chance to say, hey, pastor, like, you know, like, just, just pray, pray for this area of worry in my life. And I will, because I believe that there's people that need to be set free of that. And I'll, and I'll do that today. Um, and so, so that's the first thing. My second point, I just want to say today that the world is actually watching how we behave. And I just want to just be a little bit clear on this. I'm not going to go in for the kill, but I just... Okay, I'll do it. Okay, thank you, first of all. Some of the Christians in the public eye have not been behaving very well lately, okay? The world is watching how we behave. Now, the reason why I know this is I hang out with a lot of non-believers regularly every week at my gym. Uh, our Saturday morning workouts, we're always at the, we always go to the uh, cafe and we have chats and we have coffee. And these are guys that are business people that are unsaved. The things that they are talking about are not 
how the Christians are winning at life. The things they are talking about is how the Christians have been behaving badly, right? Because they see us. You think, oh, they don't listen to the media. They don't know, you know, we're under personal attack. They, the world is watching how we behave. And so my, my challenge for us today is to think about that and, and to think to yourself, am I behaving in a way that glorifies God? Because... When you're out there and you're, I mean, you don't have to go far to see some of the stuff or the controversy that's happened recently and the Christians are all up in arms about this and that and this and that. They will not remember, they won't remember uh, necessarily uh, the the good that was in all of that or the underlying good. All they're going to remember is your response to what happened there. And that's the stuff that they're actually talking about. Um, and so I believe that we've got to be very, very careful how we behave because that's the way that God wants us to live. Now, go with me on this because uh, I think this is really important. Recent times, Christians have done things that, and, and churches are doing things where I think they're not actually behaving the way of Christ. And I think we've got to be very careful about this. Romans 12.2, Paul is instructing us to abandon the chase for pleasure, possessions and status, to stop living like everyone else. <laughs> yeah, that's hard in the world, right? Where we're always trying to get the better thing or we're always trying to... He's instructing us to abandon the chase for pleasure and status and stop living like... Instead, he urges us to be transformed from the inside out, right? He wants us to change from the inside out. That's how we are transformed. Specifically, he writes that we must be changed in how we think to have our minds renewed so that we can begin to understand what God wants for our lives. So, so this is a renewal of the mind thing, right? You have been transformed by the renewal of your mind. And so this is a renewal of the mind thing. And so we, we've got to understand that, that to, to be a believer and to follow Christ we, our goal is that our goal is that we don't necessarily even have to preach, but by by our very lifestyle choices, the non Christians or the unbelievers will look at us and go, "Wow, something is going on there." Right? We don't even necessarily have to open our mouths, but but because of our Christian stance and our Christian view. They look at us and go, that person is different. Do you know right now the Christians are known more for what they're against than what they stand for? And I believe that that's got to change, people of Christ. We've got to be known for the things that we care about, the things that we, you know, we've got to be positive people. We've got to be filled with the Spirit of God. We've got to have power inside of us because it's too easy to go to the negative. Jesus was life. He says, I come that you may have life and life to the full. We can be negative about everything. We can be negative about so many things in our lives. God is saying, let's be the positive people that are saying, no, the world isn't going like, yeah, maybe in your heart you might think, oh, yeah, things are going really, really bad. But, but life is actually full of positivity. So we speak life. We speak hope. We believe that things can get better. Right? If you don't believe things can get better, then, then are you even following Christ? <laughs> You know, so, so, so we speak that into that situation. You know, right now I'm in a hard time, but I'm speaking life over this thing. I'm prophesying to these bones that are dry. I'm telling them that the power of God needs to come upon them. And we're speaking life and we're speaking energy into these things. And that is where the Spirit of God lives. People are like, what is it with following God? The, the, following God is just living positively. Believing that God has the power to change lives and to change your life as well. We are transformed by Christ. And I believe that the world is watching. Do you know 1 Thessalonians 4.11 says this? It says, and make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus, that hurts. <laughs> and work with your hands just as you were told so that your daily life may win respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. Let me read that again. And make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. I think we're making it an ambition to be knowing what we're against, right? 
We're trying to make it our ambition for the whole world to see what the Christians don't like. But make it your ambition to focus on you. Focus on your relationship with God, the transforming from the inside out so that you can fulfill what he wants to do. Matthew 5, Matthew 4, thanks Kathy um, for correcting the uh, scripture, but Matthew 5, 13 to 16, salt and light, you're the salt of the earth. I love to cook, I love to cook slow cooked meat, I love my Traeger grill, right? I just, you, you say you get a new hobby. You know, I had a fishing boat and my wife said, you need a new hobby. That thing's way too expensive. You use it twice a year. It costs us a lot of money to keep. So I said, okay, then if I'm selling the boat, I'm buying a Traeger. She said, that's a way better hobby. So I was like, well, I'll get the blessing. So that, well, you know, I got the, the, the wife's blessing. And so, so I was in the Mitre 10 and I got the Traeger grill and I just like, yeah, awesome. I've had it two years and I smoked meat on it. And last, our table group last week enjoyed a 13-hour brisket and... And it was just like, you know, it was like we were just living it. We were living the living large. Um, and I just love to slow cook meat, right? But the one thing I know that my best brisket, because I like a, a brisket, right? My best cooked brisket is always the best when I season it with mustard, salt and pepper. Right, I don't even need to use all this, like, you go to the thing, you buy these, like, a million rubs, we use this, uh, use this beef mix. It's got um, seven different spices in it. It'll taste amazing on your brisket. No, it doesn't. <laughs> the best brisket tastes good with salt and pepper and a really good slow cook, right? Yeah. So, so that's, that, that's the thing. Salt seasons. Yeah. Salt, and this is talking about salt. It says, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Yeah. It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown trampled underfoot. Now, this part's important. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The question I have for the congregation today is this, and you're going to have a little chance just to have a little chat about it, but what should we do to let our light shine in front of people that doesn't involve, this is the next part of my question, it's not written here, but I'm going to say it, that doesn't involve grandstanding. Because grandstanding Christianity is actually not what Christ requires us to do. He requires us to live a quiet life. He requires us to focus on what's inside of us so that we can be a blessing to people. Right, so that so that we can get our lives right, so that we can uh, be who Christ has called us to be. So have a little chat. What is it today that we can do to be salt and light in the earth? I mean, I could ask for some feedback, but I probably won't um, <laughs> this time round because you're listening to me, so I'll get to tell you what I think. But, um, but, but my thing is this, is that most people in your daily lives don't actually want to hear what you've got to say. Um, they're just too busy worrying about what they've got going on in their mind. But do you know your relationships matter? You know how you respond to disappointment matters? Do you know how you respond to setbacks that matters? How you respond to your boss that matters? 
how you respond to your employees if you're a boss, that matters. How you forgive people, that matters. Hmm? These are all things the Bible is very clear about. And do you know what? That's the, that, if you do those things, that's been salty. Yeah. That's been light in the dark. That is shining brighter than you ever could. I mean, I could, I could go into my gym friends and I could just start to preach the gospel and none of them would want to listen. They'd just be like, we don't give two hoots about what you've got to say. But that matters when they're all having a joke about something that is inappropriate and I just say, no, nah, I'm not into that. Because that's showing the light of Christ, right? That's showing Jesus. And that's where the saltiness counts. And so that was my view on that anyway. And you probably had a different one. And if I had taken your feedback, I would have heard it, but I didn't, so that's good. <laughs> right, so my, my third point today is this. And we're just about done. Who's getting excited? We're just about done. <laughs> what you focus on in your life will grow. Now, this isn't rocket science, and this has been around a long, long, long time. And this morning, this this point just serves as a reminder. What you give oxygen to will grow in your life. Um, We came out of a season last year. We had a a, a very difficult family situation. We had been looking after a a young person for a a long time, and and it really, really made our family... We found it very difficult, and, and, and I found myself often being very negative about the situation, and I found that because I was so negative, I was giving oxygen to negativity, and I found myself just always being negative. And that starts there, but then that kind of leaks out into everything else, right? You start that sort of being negative, then you're negative about how things are going with your life, and then you're negative about how your, your relationship with your kids is going, and then you, you know, so it's like it's always a starting point. And, and I just found myself being that negative guy. And what I was giving oxygen to was growing. And in that situation, it was the wrong thing, right? I was giving oxygen to negativity, and it was growing. And, and the Bible is actually very clear about what happens to believers who, 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 want to be, um, who want to be hot but are settling for cold because that makes you lukewarm. And the Bible is very clear about what happens to lukewarm believers, right? But when I first got saved, I wanted the things of the world. I wanted those things of the world that I couldn't quite let go and then move into a season where I was burning hot for Jesus Christ. But to me, those things were too far apart. And so I was living for God with one out of one breath, and I was saying, yeah, I want to be a Christian, but then I was holding on to the things of the world that were making me do the wrong thing or whatever. But, and so as a result of that, you're trying to do two things, and then you end up just being lukewarm, and the Bible's very clear about lukewarm, right? So it's either, either hot or cold. You can't be both. So you, either, you, you, you believe in Jesus and you confess him and you, and you live for Christ or you don't bother. That's basically the call of it, right? Um, and, and so I was just like, yeah, I'm trying to just mess with this. And, and I knew that what I gave focus to, and that even at that early stage of my life, I knew that what I'd given focus to was going to grow. And I wanted to be more like Christ. And so for me, I put myself around people and I went to a Bible college and I just, and I just gave focus to what I wanted to become. Mm. And as a result of that, that started to grow in my life more than the other thing. The, the other thing died away and then the focus that I was giving oxygen to started to grow. Now this just serves as a reminder that we must give oxygen to our relationship with God, yeah. not to the things of the world. We must pursue what he requires of us. And that is really, really important. How are we as an employee? Are we going to be, more, are we going to be a good friend? Can we be more generous? How are we going in a family situation? Um, you know, we've got to give oxygen to these things. And I believe if Jesus was here today, he would be saying this. What you're going to spend your life focusing on is what is going to grow. Because you're a product usually of what you think about, Right? If you're having issues in your life uh, and you've been watching a whole bunch of content that is negative and and, and downcasting, then I could guarantee you that's going to 
come out in your life, right? Because you, 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 your eyes are the window to the soul, and so what you take in, it like... But, but so you, you give oxygen to the things that need to send you closer to Christ. And I believe that that is a very important thing that we always need reminding of, right? Today, church, there's, there's some things that I've talked about. The first one I talked about was if you need to be set free of worry, then I said I was going to pray and I'm going to do that in a minute because I believe you need to be set free of that today. My second thing is I said, I talked about that idea of like, how are we living for Christ? Because the world is watching. The world is watching. And so how are we living for Christ? And if you know in your heart of hearts that there's area to grow in that space, then I also want to pray for you because I believe that how we live for Christ matters. It matters to the, to the believers, but it also matters to the unsaved. And so we need to pray in that space. And then my third point today is maybe there's something in your life that oxygen, you've been giving energy to something that maybe you shouldn't be doing or giving energy to. I believe that today, do you know what? I've talked about that before, but that's actually not a very, that's not very far. That's just a little, that's sort of like one degree off when you sort of give energy to something that maybe you shouldn't be giving it to. It's like you're not, you haven't fallen miles from the, from the grace train, like you're okay. It's just one degree off. But do you know one degree off can actually derail us? So we've actually just got to go back another degree and say, hey, Jesus, today I'm recommitting to this cause. I'm recommitting to this cause. And what you give oxygen to will grow in your life.